creativity never dies, it just shifts. And so platforms may shift. I think if you're a creator, a producer, a talent booker, a podcast host, there's always room for content. Content will always be king. Hey, and welcome back to another Pop Goes to Culture TV. I'm David Levin, and today my guest is Raquel Bruno, who is the owner and creator of Drive Entertainment Group, and uh, she is one of those professionals who's been in the industry since uh, forever. So I figured we'd bring her in and ask her to give her some, uh, give you some of her wisdom. Raquel, welcome to the show. Hi, David. Thank you for having me on. It's always an honor and a pleasure to see you and work with you and chat with you. And it's absolutely amazing to be here. Thank you for having me. So Raquel, you have been working in the entertainment industry for a very long time. And I know you've been on the talent side and I know you've done some producing. And I know that like a lot of us, you are going for the, for the big pivot. Uh, Give us, give us a little bit, give us the, the, the reader's digest version of your journey. Cause I know like, every, like everybody these days, we're all sort of in, on a new, slightly different path. Absolutely. So I've had drive entertainment group for 18 years, believe it or not. And so we have been very lucky to work in an industry that I love working in, in film and television. And I started out at Nickelodeon, which I know you and I have had parallel paths, uh, but I started out at Nickelodeon and I was one of the very few people while I was there to help launch TV land, which was an amazing opportunity. And as a young kid coming out of college and going right into that, working with a great group of people, some of the best of the best in the industry, I learned from them tremendously, everyone from Diane Rubina to Herb Scannell. And I love working there. And that's really where the very beginning of working towards um, everything that had to do with talent. I was assigned to everyone from John Ritter to the Brady Bunch while I was working wow. at TV Land. And that was kind of the beginning of it for me. Plus, I'm a musician's kid. Both my parents are jazz musicians. So I've been, I'm actually standing, you can't really see it, but I'm actually standing at my, my DJ deck. So my music <laughs> passion and my pop culture passion kind of came together both for TV land and then throughout the 90s while I was working at MTV. I always knew I wanted to make my way over to MTV. I worked at VH1 and then I eventually ended up at MTV Radio where I was able to book a ton of music and celebrity actors, what have you, for MTV Radio. And that was really where I got my start as known as a talent booker and talent producer, working with some greats such as Sally Fertini, who you and I both have worked with. Um, yep. So that's really where I got my start. And for 18 years, we've been really lucky. And of course, it's not just luck, you create your luck, right? And I was able to move it all over into management and talent booking under the Drive umbrella, which is my company. And we've worked every, everything from booking all of the Disney holiday specials to working with Wendy Williams when she had her show, to working on the documentaries for Run DMC, which just came out in the last year and a half, uh, as well as working with John Scheinfeld, who's an amazing documentary filmmaker. And we've, um, you know, today we just saw Sergio Mendez. We worked on a, on a film together. So very sad to hear about that, but we worked on a Sergio Mendez doc as well as a Herb Albert documentary together. So I've really had the, the really amazing opportunity to work in this field. One that I love very much but as you know, I went to Japan early in this year and it was a very profound effect on my life. And I came back to the one thing that as a freelancer or as a solopreneur, I would say that's really more what I am. Uh, coming back to kind of just quiet after I just booked Megan Thee Stallion for Crunchyroll's Anime Awards, but mm -hmm. I was in such a beautiful place in Japan. I came back and I was supposed to work on something that was gonna take us through to the fall. And you know, as freelancing and solopreneurs, you kind of go project to project. And it kind of came to a dead stop, which almost like everything that was had been in the pipeline kind of stopped. And I'm not alone in this, uh, but I felt one of the things that I turned to is helping people. It's something I've very much a big part of my life. My parents are also teachers. I've always been kind of a teacher and a mentor, especially when I was at Viacom. I mentored a lot of young adults there. And I turned to a group and I started a group called In The Mix and through that became 
Thrive with Drive, and I got certified in life purpose coaching, Ikigai, which is finding your life's mission, your life's purpose. And so that is what I've been working on building for the last, I would say, six months since having actually moving in that direction, because you always have to work. I have two young ones. I'm not retiring anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> that's another aspect of what Drive Entertainment Group does. Yeah. So talent strategy, talent booking, and coaching as well. Well, it sounds like you're doing a tremendous amount and wearing a lot of hats and trying on some new hats. I, uh, what was it? The Icky? How was it? How do you say it? Ikigai, Ikigai, which is a Japanese term for basically, if you look at a Venn diagram. Now, the Westerners that we are have kind of adopted it. And it really, for them, it's a much different way than what, how we look at it. But in essence, and the way I look at it is how do you find your life's purpose, your authentic voice, uh, what drives you, which is the name of my company, and how do you contribute to your life's work into society and helping others out? So that really is what Ikigai is about. What do you do every day that excites you? What do you do every day that is your passion? And uh, not only just chasing a paycheck, but actually loving what you do every day that motivates you when you wake up and go, well, oh God, do I have to do this project? Or, hey, I'm really excited about the opportunities and finding the space between where people can feel like they are A, relevant, and B, contributing, and also C, especially if you're creative in the media landscape right now, feeling that you still are, you still matter. And that is a big thing, as we've talked about, right. because there's so many talented people right now in our industry, but the opportunities just aren't there as they have been. We're in an election year. Yep. We had the strikes last year. There's just so much happening. Um, and so it's really supporting the creative community as well to make sure that they keep doing what they do because it will get better. It just may take a little bit of time. So much happening. And also, I mean, I've been doing this a very long time, uh, as have you, but I've been longer. Um, but I've never seen anything like the last couple of months. Uh, and I've never seen so many people uh, kind of panicking about the situation or getting depressed about the situation or like you, like it's dead. Yeah. And people are thousands of people that we know have lost their jobs. Yes. And they are looking to either find something new, but the thing mm -hmm. that they're looking to find maybe isn't there anymore. It may right. never be there again, the way we knew it. Mm -hmm. We are going through a major shift right now, culturally and the media and everything else, when you started to recognize it, what made you say, okay, I think I got to pivot. I think I got to change. I think I can't just do what I've been doing. So I started seeing the slowdown. Um, even though I was going to Japan, I, I was starting to feel that. And I'd say in the last year, and this by the way, happened for me when I left MTV networks and I, uh, had started my journey and then became went on my own. I started seeing the, the winds of change happening over at Viacom. Mm -hmm. I, and that was at the very beginning of, you know, way back in 2005, I started seeing the beginnings of the cutbacks where it was no longer about the creativity. It was much more about the bottom line. And which is a shame because we really were in the beautiful era of being creative, whether at Nickelodeon, MTV, VH1, we really got to witness some incredible creativity and, and also the autonomy yep. structure around us in which to do that. They gave us a lot of leeway and it's a shame that we've lost our step in that because, you know, it's just, unfortunately money is dictating a lot of things right now uh, because it's just, and that's the beauty of what we were able to do at Nickelodeon, Nick at Night, TV Land, MTV, VH1. I love being able to witness that and take a chance and, and not worry to fail. That's one thing that we have been, our kind of, uh, the structure is that, oh, you're not allowed to fail. You can't fail in a live show, you can't fail. You know, we wouldn't be with half the inventions we have on this planet without embracing failure. So for right. me, and I had to learn this lesson a really hard way because I'm so used to having a certain level of success with drive and I'm very, because I'm, you know, I am a hustler. <laughs> I hustle for yeah. the things that I get and the things that I do in the positive way. I stay in close contact with those that I love working with, but it is, it is a certain muscle memory that you have to have, and it isn't always an easy thing. And so those that might be not like, oh, you know, it, it takes a lot for certain social anxieties. It's just, it's a lot to constantly stay 
up with the Joneses, right? right and in right. my in my way, it's just like being in touch with people all the time. It is a, it is a, a job, and uh, but one that should be authentic as well. And being able to work in shorthand with those that you like on a production. It, it, it really is something that I talk about all the time. Having shorthand with those that you work with is one of the best things, one of the best gifts you can have because you don't have to, it's not about, listen, there's a lot of toxicity that has happened in our industry. Yeah. But one yeah. thing is that you know that the, the folks in your group, your pod, your production family, they have your back for the most part and you can have shorthand with them. So it's almost like you give a look like, hey, I need this da, 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 and it's done. Like you and I work together and we as as if we had known each other for years, which we kind of did, like with the way that we have been in the same circles. But the fact right. that well, we we, stepped, we knew what we knew what the shorthand was. Between we knew what the shorthand was, and you and I were able to kind of lift each other up on a project that you and I worked on very easily because we knew what each other needed in order to get our jobs done. And that in itself is an absolute blessing when you're able to do that with people you can trust. Trust is a big factor, but. For me, I saw the changes happening. I have two, I'm, a, I'm an older mom, that's a whole other journey. And I had my kids later in life. And I realized that hoping to get paid, hoping to get work was just not sustainable. And yeah. I, it started to slow down in the last year or so, ever since we kind of came out of the pandemic, yeah. live TV and live anything took a hit. And then on top of it, um, you know, you've got the strikes that we what, that we lived through, which were important and needed to happen. And again, we've landed here at an election year where everyone's holding on to their dollar. So I don't know if we're, you know, it's going to be a minute. And now you've got AI and you've got all these other things, which, you know, if, if you can figure out how to harness it to make it work, <laughs> as we've talked about, yeah, then that works. But if not, I mean, you have to be very adaptable. And for me, my kids you know, ha giving them a, a beautiful life is what's most important to me, but also not losing my identity as a creator. So it's how do I bridge the two and not be stressed about the almighty dollar and also be able to fulfill my ikigai, which is helping others in their journey as well. I feel a lot of what you're saying and, and so much of what, what you're talking about is stuff that, uh, that you and I have discussed, and I'm hearing these kind of discussions all over the place. Um, and I know you're doing um, your your um, was it weekly, monthly um, zooms that you're doing right Two now. Two different uh, things that we're doing. We're doing. There's a mastermind group that I've put together, and anyone is welcome to it. It's uh, we. It's a. It's a month. It's a weekly get together with a you know monthly subscription. But what's great about it is a whole group get together that are mm -hmm. in. They're all different. Um, in all different parts of creativity. One of them's a musician. Another one is also a podcast mm -hmm. producer. And we get together once a week and I send them thought provoking questions to have them starting to think, you know, get off the hamster wheel to think about things so that if they want to create in maybe a different sector for now, we can do that. And they start and they also feel that they have right. um, support, not just from me, but from um, fellow thrivers, we call them. And then I also have put together what's called in the mix mm -hmm. for the industry. And that is free. That is a zoom. I'm doing it now quarterly. We actually have one coming up uh, with Vinnie Potestivo, who I worked with at MTV, who also made the pivot before it was time yep. to pivot for a lot of us. And so I wanted him to talk about his experience. So that's coming up um, September 24th. But what I'm going to do is focus on that once a quarter, because it is a lot of work to put together, but it's something that I feel is very important yep, right yep. now is to give people hope and for people to also stretch themselves a little bit to figure out, okay, we've been in this lane for so long. How do we get off? You know, if I'm going to take this exit, <laughs> where does that exit lead me? And so how do I get there? Mm -hmm. So that's what in the mix is about to kind of get you out of your regular process of thinking like, oh, I just got to get through the day and do my to-do list. It's also thinking about how do I tap into my higher self? I'm very spiritual. How do I tap into my higher self and actually do something in line with what I've always wanted to do and been too afraid to do it because I'm not getting paid to do it. So it's, it's a catch 22, but I'm hoping that people will start to take faith and stock in themselves and start to really invest in their own future, regardless of what the outside outside noise is right now. It's super important for you to tap in because 
creativity doesn't go away. It's still there. It's just how do you manifest it into something else yeah. that could actually maybe even make you a little happier than just doing the same old, same old and being in the grind. So how would somebody get into in the mix? Is it by invitation? How does somebody, if they somebody can wants email to me, uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn and on there, we actually um, have the information. There's a flyer up right now. It has my email up there. You can reserve a spot and it is open really to anyone who feels right now that they just need a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of support. And again, we're aiming to do it once a quarter and our next one is September. I'll probably try to squeeze one more in before the end of the year. And I'm, I try to bring in some speakers and, and myself speaking to what it is to make the pivot, to not give up hope, not give up your creativity, because there's creativity in really all that we do. Mine is, I find my muse here, I'm, I'm pointing at my, my two technique turntables, uh, but everybody has something, right. whether it is how they cook a meal or how they you know, maybe they can do woodworking. I mean, everyone has a passion in what they do and it's figuring out how to actually, because when, when you, for me, I could go six hours, which I did on Wednesday, six hours of DJing. And you don't mm -hmm. even realize that the time oh, has wow. passed because I love it so much. If you're having, having fun. fun. Yeah. And absolutely. that is what is important. I think we've lost our joy in our journey. <laughs> and I think it's important to find that again, regardless of what is happening. I think it's important to really, cause life's too short. Um, I, I've always said since I'm a kid, carpe diem, live your best life. Uh, and so this is just in line with that because we get mm -hmm. so caught up and got to pay the bills, got to pay the bills. And there's someone that I love listening to all the time. His name is Ken Honda. He had a, he had a, actually a, uh, a seminar today and his book is called happy money. I stumbled upon it and I fell in love with it because he talks about, it's not just the financial part of it that is what abundance is uh, and what mm -hmm. money represents. It should represent your relationships with your family, the friendships that you have, like that is where abundance really lies. Money is just one aspect of all those things that you could have in your life. That sounds amazing. Uh, you are you are certainly doing it. Um, Let's talk a little bit about your career. You know, we all have stories from our careers. You know, you can, every everybody, not just us who work in entertainment, everybody has a day. You come home from work and you say, honey, you can't believe what happened at work today. You will not believe. And when we do it, it's, you know, there are famous people or people that, you know, we've admired or not admired. And we work with them and we get these opportunities that other people don't have. What are the stories you've dined out on? Tell me a couple of just fun stories that you can tell that you might well, not have Well, one I have publicly. shared, but it's always important, especially since we talk about the world of TV land. Uh, I had the absolute honor. It's funny because I have the book sitting next to me all the time. But I had the absolute honor of working with John Ritter, who was absolutely probably oh, my, my biggest yeah. uh, my biggest influence from the beginning. And so he... You know, John, and it's funny, oh, John, fantastic. John, I was assigned to, I'll briefly tell the quick story, but I was assigned to Werner Klemper from, um, from Hogan's Heroes the year before. And it was a, it was a challenging week, but by the end of it, you know, I loved him because I wanted to hear all the Hollywood stories. And I just also appreciate him. He reminded me so much of my grandfather. And I was working in marketing at the time for TV land. I, I moved up from Nickelodeon as an assistant in, in uh, acquisitions. And so the following year was time again for the upfronts uh, and three's company was what we were going to be rolling out. And so everyone was like, Oh, I, I want to be, you know, John's escort wrangler. Let's call it wrangler. Um, mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely not. You all <laughs> put me through the ringer with Werner and Werner was amazing. And it was actually a blessing in disguise. He just, he just wanted to be heard, which I find out with most of my talent they just want to be heard. They just want to get their point across. They want to feel like they're in a safe place. It's, yeah. but they're humans at, at the end of the day. So when I was, a, so finally yep. I won that battle. I was assigned to John. I was no more than uh, maybe 24, 25, maybe. And because I had started out as an intern at Nickelodeon. Wow. And so John yep. was there with, um, with Bob Myman, who is still a friend. That was his partner um, at all things, John Ritter and his lawyer. 
one of the best as a lawyer, one of the best and, and as a friend. So I got, I went in, you know, it was going to meet up with them to bring them downstairs. It was at the Waldorf Astoria. And I realized that I got there a little bit too early and they were still having breakfast. And I'm like, Oh, I'll, I'll come back. And he's like, Oh no, you don't. And he opened the door and he doesn't know me from anyone. And he sits me down and he goes, have you eaten? You haven't eaten. Right. And he's like, tell me more about you. And he working in <laughs> talent to this day, I, I mourn him all the time. Um, because, and we actually, the, the anniversary is right around now of the, of his loss. He, showed me that you could be raised in Hollywood. You can go through the Hollywood system. You know, his dad was Tex Ritter, but you Ritter, don't have yeah. to be a jerk. You can actually be one of the kindest people in this industry because yeah. it was an industry he loved. He loved making people laugh. But what I loved about him is he looked you in the eye. He wanted to know your name. He took your hand and he treated the assistant to the CEO with the same amount of respect. And so I learned that day and then many other times working with him after that, that always choose kindness. Doesn't matter how stressed you are. Doesn't matter what you're working on. And as someone else always says to me, like people, we work in PR, yeah. not ER. So it's like, like, let's have some, let's have some <laughs> semblance of understanding what we do. We are blessed to do what we do. Like we are honored to do what we do and it doesn't have to be so serious. And you should always pe treat people with respect. Yeah. And so I learned that early on working with John and I miss him terribly. So that that's on, that's on one side of it. And on the other side of it, working with some of the greats, some of the musicians in my life uh, right now, I, I, from day one, when I saw the video, only the lonely by the motels. I mean, I was just mm -hmm. blown away by who, mm -hmm. who this woman was on the screen wearing her, you know, 1940s netted veil and uh, fascinator, you know, just walking around in, in this own, owning that video. And uh, I am currently 25 years of a friendship with Martha. I'm currently managing her. And so that's what I'm saying. You sometimes mm -hmm. have to go after your dreams. Oh, wow. And they say don't meet your idols, you but there's two examples right there where I met my idols and they have been nothing but the greatest life lessons and friendships that I could ask for. I am talking uh, at some point, I'm starting to, to start to relay stories from my own career. And I have met many of my idols and there's only one of them who gave me uh, the willies in a bad time. That's, but we won't we'll talk save about that for today, another time. <laughs> but I have so, I mean, I have so many stories, right? We, you know, flying into the the VMAs into Miami during the hurricane and I'm going, are we, what is happening mm. here? I mean, that was, that was intense being on thousands of red carpets with some of the best of the best, you know, just, there were so many memories from whether I was working at TV land or just, you know, working with some of my idols, being able to give them a platform working at drive entertainment. There's just, there's some, there's a lot of great stories and I'm just, uh, MTV radio, I was able to bring in um, the one, the only Rick James. He wanted to fly me on his private jet. And wow. I said, I don't think you have a private jet anymore, Rick. I love you, but no. <laughs> um, but there's many, many stories like that. And we tell like MTV News, we, you know, we, we, I was able to yeah. have Shaq introduce, uh, be introduced to Jack Black because he was such a big fan. And so the two of them together, Shaq wow. and Black, it was Shaq great. Shaq and Black. And I they love it. were, hilarious together. I mean, they were literally not, and that was one of the great moments when I was working at MTV uh, radio, we shared the same floor as MTV news. So a lot of the times I was working very closely with the bookers over in news. And then we would have to, we were booking their interviews for very yep. different purposes, but we would share the space. And sometimes the combination of people that would meet through either my VMA radio forum, where we had 50 talent in one day because yep. I had to keep 25 radio stations happy. They were live from all over the country and I had to book every type of, of genre you can imagine. So we were busy. We were busy oh, down, downstairs as the VMA, uh, you know, rehearsals wow. were happening up at radio city or wherever we were, we were downstairs or to the side of where it was mm -hmm. and having everyone from like, you know, slash to the beastie boys come through it was it was amazing so, like i got to work with uh stevie wonder a few times and i got to put together when i was working with centric when they were um around which was amazing i was able to do 
Stevie Wonder a message of peace on the UN floor before they re they redid the UN floor. And we had everyone from Janelle Monet to Sting. Wow. To, I mean, some of the greats and I had a hand in producing all of it. Oh, we had to shift some things around because I had Sting had to leave early that day because he was recording. But that excitement of being in live television also is just always makes for some incredible stories. And so just but also just being able to work with some of the best of the best and see talent, which is why I love doing this in their element and just working through some of the great performances that they put together from concept to execution. Uh, we had Neo open Miss Universe in Thailand, and we had to do this in Thailand at five oh. or six in the morning to make sure we were hitting the time slot for Fox um, entertain, you know, for Fox at eight live, right. eight o'clock live. And we could not, you should actually YouTube this, but you might be able to pull it. We had Thai drummers, we had Thai dancers, and then we had, we mm. had Neo performing while all of the contestants were also working, walking through. And we had to have it all work together oh my God. in a performance, the opening of Miss Universe. It was one of my greatest moments in terms of a performance and to see it to that level because you don't have a lot of um rehearsal time and being able to put that together and like basically yep. like concept the whole time with lots of calls about it but then only really one day of rehearsals and it went off perfectly so if you have a chance mm -hmm. to see that opening with neo that was one of my one of my proud moments right there as well Raquel, thank you. Uh, if there's anything you want to uh, leave us with, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I would love to bring you back so that we could go live so people can ask you questions actually on the show. Um, but if there's anything that you would leave with, you know, like you said, there's a lot of people who are trying to break into right. the industry and it feels like there is no industry. Um, there are a lot of people who are sort of trying to navigate a major change that they may or may that they feel like they may or may not make it through, and then there are people who are sort of towards in their, I don't want to say senior, but but approaching the cult, what should be the culmination of their careers, and they're going through things that they never expected to go through when they when they started out. Is this are there any words of wisdom you can absolutely leave us with before creativity we creativity never dies; it just shifts. And so platforms may shift. I think if you're a creator, a producer, a talent booker, a podcast host, there's always room for content. Content will always be king. It's just a matter of making sure that you stay relevant. And when I say relevant, I mean, make sure you're showing up to, if you're in the producer's guild, make sure you go to the mixers. If you are um, wanting to learn a skill, mm -hmm. go out there and learn a skill. There are many things that you can do to make sure that you're staying on top of your game personally and to also keep you as I, that's why I call it in the mix. Make sure you're staying in touch with people. Make sure you're reaching out to friends that you've worked with before because you just never know what's going to happen. And so the most important part of all of this is that you are staying true to yourself, which is why I started what I started with, um, with Thrive With Drive. Make sure that you are reaching out to folks that you liked working with and that you would maybe want to collaborate with. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people kind of shut down and they're like, well, this is mine. I got to hold on to mine. When we go into situations like that, you have to expand and figure out how can we collaborate? There is enough for everybody in the space. You just have to be willing to make a shift. And so when you're able to make a shift and realize that not everything is gonna stay the same, the one thing that we can depend on is the fact that change is constant and there's always a moving target with what we wanna do. But if you love what you do and you wanna create all the time, write it down, create, produce, do all the things you want to do for yourself and put it out there to the universe. So beautifully said, Raquel Bruno, thank you for coming on. And we've got your address, your email uh, at, at the bottom of the screen so people can find it. And it's also in the link. So thank you so much for doing this with me. And, uh, thank you and for having we'll me, David. I'm sending time. you lots of love and I can't wait to have shorthand with you again soon. Fantastic. And thank you for watching. If you like what you're seeing, uh, please subscribe and share this. And uh, if you want to talk to uh, Raquel and other people live when we do our live shows, 
absolutely join the channel. It's not very expensive and there's going to be a lot of extra content. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh, and if you want to know more about what's going on in the entertainment industry, uh, take a look at this video, which is, which is going to play when you 